When are we going to Mexico? Now, quarter after now. About a quarter after yesterday. Yeah. It's a cold snap. I think today and tomorrow are the last days and then we get hot. 40. Tomorrow starts getting better. Yeah, short lived. Whew. Oh my God, they got so much snow here. These boats are, I can't even imagine having a boat covered in over a foot of snow. Check out this dinghy. Last time aboard Freedom, we arrived in Comox Harbor on Vancouver Island to wait out some unusually wintry weather hitting the west coast. After digging Freedom out of the snow, we braved the sub-zero temperatures and ventured out to see what the small waterfront town has to offer. Apparently a lot, including a frozen marina, so if you missed it, be sure to check it out. Now, after a quick 36-hour layover, we're cruising 60 nautical miles south into the Gulf Islands, where we'll be enjoying the final week of our six-week adventure here in British Columbia. So our water maker just stopped making water. We're not sure why. Uh, when we woke up this morning and turned it on, when we left the dock, it was making water. Now it's not. So it's a little scary. Hopefully it's just because it's cold. Maybe something in it froze. Not sure, but uh, most places have their water turned off and they're probably going to be turned off for a week while it's below freezing. So this should be interesting. down into the engine room and do a fill valve switch. Um, when we're underway, I try to get into the engine room every two to four hours. Uh, if it's a shorter trip, where the trip length may only be two or three hours, then what I do is I take the mileage and I divide it in half and that's when I choose to go down into the engine room. So if it's a three hour trip, I end up going down there at like the hour and a half mark. The reason why I, I kind of split it in half is we're constantly changing which tank we're pulling fuel from to keep our tanks um, even so that the boat doesn't kind of develop a list otherwise at the dock I would have to pump fuel uh, from the higher from the fuller tank into the less full tank to get the boat to sit level so it's easier just to you know try to always monitor engine run time and run equal amount of time on starboard and then switch over and run equal amount of time on port so I'll go down there uh, change the fuel valves um, and then just do a quick check and make sure nothing's on fire, make sure there's no gross leaks, um, but I'm not going to get crazy with checking temperatures and all those kinds of things. So let's go down there and change the fuel valves. Here we go. All right, it's quite loud in here, so I'm going to put my uh, ear protection on. All right, the ear protection's on. I'll turn the lights on. Always good to look through the window, make sure you're not walking into a fire or spraying oil or a problem. So everything looks clear, so we'll go ahead and open the door.
those are um, some of the quicker checks. Uh, sometime we'll go into a more detailed check where we get out the temperature gun and, and check some different uh, temperature spots on the transmission and the engine, but looks good. With the engine room check complete, that means we're halfway to Silva Bay, our first stop in the Gulf Islands. The remainder of our cruise brought some snow and some clearing so we could see all the way across the Strait of Georgia. The Gulf Islands are a group of islands situated between Vancouver Island and BC's mainland. They're the Canadian cousins to the San Juan Islands, located to the southeast in Washington state, and as many of you know, a place we love. The first of the southern Gulf Islands when arriving from the north is Gabriola Island. It's home to Silva Bay, which is a protected and scenic destination sprinkled with tiny islands overlooking the Strait of Georgia. It's also home to Pages Resort and Marina, which just so happened to have two slips available for us and our good friend Dennis, who's also enjoying a bit of winter cruising. out this snow here in Silva Bay. It is quite a bit, but what a perfect name! Powder Snow. I wonder when they named that if they knew what they were going to get in the winters. John, uh, when are we going to Mexico? Now, quarter after now. About a quarter after yesterday. Yeah, it's a cold snap. I think today and tomorrow are the last days and then we get hot, 40. Tomorrow starts getting better. Yeah, short lived. Whew. Oh my God, they got so much snow here. These boats are, I can't even imagine having a boat covered in over a foot of snow. Check out this dinghy. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, goodness. That's gotta suck. Imagine if that was your only mode of transportation. Pages Resort and Marina is a great stopover since it's got plenty of space to stretch the legs and to get the dogs out. It also has a really nice general store if you need to grab some extra provisions, maybe a bottle of wine, or a good book. You might also have the pleasure of meeting Morgan, the friendly and furry store manager. Yes, the snowfall report. Reporting live from Silva Bay. Right. How much snow? Mm -hmm. Only seven. Only seven inches. What about over here? I feel like this is more. Just, uh, There's been some melting. <laughs> oh, your feet are cold? Well, it's official, seven inches. Ooh, that's ice. Ooh, got some murder weapons here. Oh my gosh. Well, 
by Silva Bay. We'll see you in the summer. Our next stop is Ganges on Salt Spring Island, one of the most popular and well-known destinations here in the Gulf Islands. Our route took us through a narrow passage with a lot of current that definitely put our stabilizers to work. Hopefully Dennis didn't mind the short-lived turbulence. Once we made it through Gabriola Passage, it was smooth sailing to Salt Spring Marina in Ganges. Sadly, our buddy boat has to head back to Seattle. Safe travels, Dennis! So we are about 30 minutes out of Ganges. We're almost there, and as we are rounding the corner, into the bay, we got a little lumpy. It's anywhere from 15 to 20 knots of wind, so um, we've been getting some bow spray. Um, we got some pre pretty consistently over the last hour, we've been getting a lot of it, and it's freezing on contact, which is not good. So Sean's out there wiping down the windows and the windshield wipers, and it's salt water. So for salt water to be freezing so quickly after hitting the boat, that's when you know it's cold. Um, we're supposed to be getting some kind of a bomb cyclone over the next few days, uh, pretty much from the west coast all the way to the east coast of the U.S., uh, or North America, rather, since we're getting it up here in Canada. Um, last year, same time, same thing, some kind of a cyclone over the Pacific that smacked us in the face, and it looks like it's happening again this year. Boating December 15th to like January 15th, even into February lately has been uh, kind of rough. So you never know what you're gonna get. Uh, some years it's not bad. Last couple years it's been bad. Um, so it's gonna be uh, an adventurous, sporty couple days. and wow freedom is a mess frozen salt water, frozen salt water. that's when you know it's cold but it's still kind of gross oh look at these rails oh Sean you must be about to have a heart attack <laughs> but they shoveled for us that's something to be really excited about Oh, oh, I don't even know anymore. Sounds weird. Yeah, it's like like sleeting now. Like the click, 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 click. Yeah. Great. Beautiful. God, can you imagine being out at anchor? Be beautiful. And just like knowing your boat is covered in a foot of snow and now ice. Is it much different than being at a dock. Yeah, like it's just harder to get to. Oh. 
Yeah. So, uh, what's the deal you on the water maker, Shunners? I don't know. I haven't really looked into it. Yeah. Do you have faith that it can be fixed on this trip, or do we have to get home and get a part? Get mm, the pump? I don't know. I should look for a part at least. Is there a boat store nearby? Did you look on the map? No, they wouldn't have what we need. Oh. We'll go look for a part. But that means we still have to get back to collect it, right? We would still have to be back home. If we had to order one? Yeah. 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 So we got plenty of water, though. Our time is limited, is what you're telling me. We've got, like, probably at least 250 gallons left. The way you shower and wash dishes? Uh, Paper plates? You're the one we got to be worried about. No, I shower every other day. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Martha, that's oh, disgusting. No. Okay. This is the calm after the storm. It's actually really nice out. It's like warm. And uh, we're gonna walk into town and get some fixings for our Christmas opera hour. We're gonna have a little appetizers, a little mini feast. And hopefully this is the end of the snow. I think the next foreseeable future is gonna be in the 40s and this stuff can all melt and we can go back to normal boating, which would be nice. Sean, are you not wearing socks? Oh, yeah. I just don't know why for the life of you, you can't dress for the weather ever. Welcome to Ganges, a long harbor filled with a lot of goodies. This popular boating destination is home to a large anchorage, several marinas, a seaplane terminal if you're not arriving by boat, and a small waterfront town with a friendly and artsy vibe. Here you'll find shops, cafes, bakeries, restaurants, a hardware store, and nice grocery stores that came in very handy for us as we stocked up for our Christmas extravaganza. difference 48 hours makes it is absolutely crazy it's 50 degrees all of the snow is melted and it feels like spring it's crazy how the weather is like completely hot and cold here but I'm not complaining it's a perfect day to move on to our next destination summer's in the air oh, yeah. I know Martha it's very exciting can you feel that warmth no heat. No heat. Natural heat. Yeah. Love it. Sadly, our time here in British Columbia is coming to an end, at least for now. The past six weeks in this incredible part of the world have been the best, and we're not at all ready to leave. But since we have two more days before heavy winds return and we have to head back across the border, we're ending our trip at one of our favorite marina resorts, Poets Cove. Located on the southern tip of Pender Island, Poets Cove was our very first experience in Canada when we moved to Seattle nearly nine years ago. It's convenient because it's a customs check-in point, but it's also a luxurious marina resort with a lot to explore. Hey Sean, you suppose this is where hitchhikers wait? Yeah. Wow. No way, dude. Drivers don't have to take the first in line. That sounds like uh, profiling to me. Doesn't seem too fair. 
But life's not fair. See anything? Huh? Oh, wow. that wood that was ready to be swept off the beach yeah and put right into freedom's path <laughs> <laughs> good time to be a beachcomber i know that's what we should start doing harnessing the logs tying them up selling them i know are back at Poets Cove and it is time to hit up the hot tub. That is probably the number one reason to come here in the winter is their hot tub. It's actually super hard to find a hot tub at marinas here in even San Juans and Gulf Islands, but Poets Cove has one, so we're gonna hit it up. Which way is the beach? That way. <laughs> Towels, snacks, and drinks. Winter boating doesn't have to suck after all. Swimming in the rain. Yeah. Nothing but swimming, swimming in, in the, the rain. rain. Swimming in the rain. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed seeing some highlights from our time in this Gulf Island paradise, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, become a subscriber if you haven't already, and hit that teeny tiny little notification bell so you won't miss next time when we find out just how hard it actually is to get back into the U.S. of A before taking the plunge into a new year. We'll see you next time!